Oh, well done. Well done. Um, so yes, Chovvav Ahmed Aleph, the Mishnah. And I'll say we've moved from Kiddush of Honor from now to the actual Shoifer itself, as it's in some ways, you can say, towards the, the latter part of the whole Masechta, towards the end, really. Um, because we're dealing with the Shoifer, then we move on to um, the actual davening itself, um, and all the psukim for Rosh Hashanah, um, and the, the actual shofar itself, the shofar sounds. <clears throat> but before we do that, let's have a look at this Mishnah, please. So, yeah, the Mishnah Chavon. Kol ha shofaros kasherim. Any shofar is kosher to be used for talk about Rosh Hashanah. Chutz Michel Poro, besides the horn of a cow, a cow's horn is not permitted. Um, so, before we go any further, actually, I should just mention uh, I did just hear from Mervyn about. Um, Charles, there doesn't seem to be any, any change really in Charles, and, but we do uh, have it bear in mind and now to us, Yeshua Leib or Leib, Yeshua Leib Ben Malka, um, of course, um, a member of the Shia from the very beginning, well, since I joined the Shia, going back 35 years or so, um, and I think he was there even before that, but we do all wish him very well indeed, and uh, I say a speedy recovery. Um, if you look at Rashi, that's interesting. Uh, Ayel, we know, a ram's horn. Or shel yoel. Normally, that's a, a wild ram. Um, so it doesn't matter whatever shofar it is. Um, could be a lamb, ram. Um, we'll more of that in a moment. So the wild lamb, wild goats, I think wild goats is normally the translation. Um, besides a cow or a bull, when we say par, par, it's a, we're, you know, it's the same species, a cow or a bull, um, that is not permitted according to the Tanakama. Why? Mipnei shehu keren. What do you mean it's a keren? Keren is a horn. What do you mean it's a horn? What's it meant to be? Have a look at Rashi. Einoi koru shoifa. Ah. Yes. We may think that the word shoifa and keren are synonyms. But if the animal, when referring to its horn, Tanakh Torah calls it a Karen. That's not good enough. Why not, says Rashi? It's not called a shofar. Where do we find the word shofar used? Funnily enough, we do not find the word shofar mentioned on Rosh Hashanah. Remember for Rosh Hashanah, find the Psukim in Emar, we talk about in, in uh, Kami Pinchos, for those in Eretz Israel. Um, it's called it doesn't mention uskatim shofar, but continue Rashi. But when it's talking about the Yom Kippur, which Yom Kippur are we talking about? When is a shofar blown on Yom Kippur? We're not talking about the end of Yom Kippur. When Yom Kippur leaves us after Neila, that's a minute, a wonderful minute, a custom of blowing the shofar. There's no mitzvah in our Torah to blow that shofar, but there is a mitzvah in our Torah to blow the shofar on Yom Kippur of the Jubilee year. So what? Continue Rashi. Kasiv, in reference to that impartious Baha, which we had, the Posuk says, Bahavarto shofar teruo. Pass, which actually means blow the shofar, a truer sound on the shofar, and that is referring to Yom Kippur of the Yovel. Says Rashi, preempting the Gemara much later on, Uba Perek Basra. And then the very last, are you okay? Thumbs up. And in the very last Perek of this 
and Rosh Hashanah. Gomrinon, we learn there, Rosh Hashanah, Miyovo. So just like the shofar is blown in that jubilee year, sadly, we're not actually observing jubilee at the moment. Um, waiting, it's very interesting, our is about jubilee. Um, not only are you talking about the base of Mikdash rebuilt, it, it's not so much that, it needs the majority of Jews to be living in Israel. And actually, it's getting close. It is actually getting close. I know there's a huge numbers we know in, in America um, and also other places, but particularly in America. But you do need Rov Yisrael to be living in Ernst Yisrael to have the Jubilee. Uh, at the moment, we're not up to there. So anyway, Jubilee is not held at the moment. Not, there's no mitzvah of the Yovel year. Um, Shemitah is rather different, but Yovel is, is not applicable. However, the psukim about Yovel tell us about blowing the shofar, And the Gemara in Lamed Dalad, Omad, Alf, will tell us that we compare the Jubilee year and the blowing of the shofar and all the mitzvahs that are done on that Jubilee Yom Kippur with the standard annual Rosh Hashanah, in particularly for blowing the shofar. So, as it says the word shofar there, we look for an animal or animals where the word shofar is used. Says the Tanakama, if you look at the para, words about a para, talking about the horn, you do not find the word shofar used, you find the word keren. So back to the Mishnah, Mipnei Shehu Keren. Yeah, it's called a Keren. Says the Gemara, Rishna, Omar Abiyasi, what's wrong with the word Keren? Bahalo Kol HaShofaros Nikru Keren. All Shofaros, whether it's coming from a ram's horn, Shenerba, bringing a posuk, Shpim Shoich Bekeren Hayovel. Yovel means the ram, it's another word for the ram, uh, as Rashi mentions here. Bekeren Hayovel. That, that, that word Yovel, by the way, doesn't mean the Jubilee year, it means the animal. Look at Rashi. For Yovel Dichra, that word Yovel mentioned there that we're looking at, posuk coming from Yehoshua. The word keren is used. It's talking about the ram. Could have a the Gemara will explain this later on. So, Rabbi Yossi answers back and says, What is wrong with the word keren? We're all familiar with the ram's horn, but the ram's horn itself is called a keren. So, keren is a wonderful word to use. Why do you have to have this word shofar? Keren should be good enough. That is the Machlokas, the Tanakama, and Rabbi Yossi in the Mishnah. Again, the Tanakama saying everything permitted, bar the an ox, cow, shor, shor, por. Rabbi Yossi says even that's permitted. You can use any horn you like. Now, the, the later Mishnahis will tell us there are things which say that the shofar is anyway not permitted. Uh, if there are breaks in the shofar, that's another Mishnah. But at the moment, we're just talking about what items can be used. Good to see you, Laurie. Um, we have the Mishnah Chavav Omad Aleph and the Mishnah, the Machlikas in the Mishnah between the Tanakama and Rav Yossi, whether you can use all horns. Uh, and we do mean animals rather than just the uh, um, trumpet voluntary. Um, but the horn, any animal will be permitted, according to the Tanakama, besides coming from an ox, a cow, a shur, a bull. Um, that is not permitted because the word shofar is never used with that animal. And Rabbi Yossi says, What's wrong with the word keren? Keren also means a horn, and therefore those, um, the, the para, the shor, is also going to be permitted. That is the machlokas in the Mishnah. Okay, on we go. Says the Gemara. 
Shapir Kaoma Rab Yosi. Does it mean Shapir? Shva Kadomoch. It's good. As you say in Yiddish, good gefreit. He's asked, well, Rabbi Yossi's point is a very valid point. We're all familiar with blowing the ram's horn. The ram's horn itself is called Karen. So if the shur is called the, when you talk about the horn of the shur, the par, the para, it's called a Karen then Karen should be permitted. It's even used for a ram's horn. It's called the Karen. So what's wrong with the word Karen? Oh, I like that. Peter, change of person. Thank you. So we understand the question. The question is, the Gemara is asking, what is wrong with the argument that Rabiosi has put up? What's wrong with the word Karen? The ram's horn is called the Karen. So therefore, if you find, like with the shur, the bull, it's called a keren. What's wrong with that? Aren't they not synonyms? Answers the Gemara. For Rabbonon, what did the Rabbonon do with that reply or that question from Rabbi Yossi? This is the crucial point. Kola <clears throat> shofaros. Ikri shoifa, bikri keren. That's true. They might be called keren, but the kosher animals that you're, the animals you're using for the horn are also called shoifa. This word shoifa is crucial. They may well be referred to as a keren, but they're also called a shoifa, and that's the crucial word we want. Again, back to the Gemara. The para, however, the horn of the para, keren ikri shofa lo ikri. You do not find it's referred to as a shofa. It's referred only to the keren. Nothing wrong with a ram's horn being called a keren, but we do find that a ram's horn is called a shofa. And that's really what we want, because the Apostle says, blow a shofar to Rua. It's got to be an animal, which is called a shofar as well. Have a look at the Gemara. Where do we see that the uh, par, the ox, the cow, uh, male, female, how do you know they're called Karen? Because the Apostle says, Bechayr shoyra yohodala. It's talking, if you remember, the brachas that uh, Moshe Rabbein was giving to the Shvatim prior to his death. And it, it says there, the beauty of the, uh, of the Shvatim. What's it mean, like the firstborn of the ox, and its horns, are like the horns of Ra'aim, Ra'aim, like a, a wild uh, bison, some people translate it. Um, but it's called there, you do find the word, it's called um, a Karen. Have a look at Rashi, Ikri Karen, Rikri Shofar. You have to have animals which are called certainly a Shofar. If they're called Karen as well, that's fine. But you've got to have the crucial word we're looking for is the word shofar. Says Rashi, Ikri Karen. It's called Karen. That we know already, as we've mentioned in the Mishnah. Bim Shoich be Karen Hayovel, the ram. It's called the horn, the Karen. That's fine. Says Rashi, but it's also called the crucial word we're looking for, the link word, which is shofar. As we know in Matan Torah and Pasha Sisra, it says there, when there's the, remember the long sound of the ram, the horn, clearly the ram's horn is called a shofar, and therefore it, or anything from that species, they're called a shofar. They may be called Karen as well. However, 
The para, according to the Tanakama, is not acceptable because it is not called the crucial word shofar. Yeah. yeah. Says Rashi, Bakane Ra'im Karna. It's got the horns of the Ra'im, this bison, the wild, um, the, the car of the, the horns of the shur that's representing Klal Yisrael, the various shvatim in their strength as they're going towards Eretz Yisrael to conquer Eretz Yisrael. And it's first shall Bachar Shoirer, Bachar of an ox. Keren Ashkhon de Ikri, we found it's called Keren. Um, that's true, but we, we, when you're talking about the ox, the Shar, it's only called Keren, but we do not find it's called uh, Shofar. Says the Gemara, that's a pretty strong argument, Rabbi Yossi. What they're saying is, it doesn't matter if it's called Karen, but the crucial word is shofar. And the word, when we're talking about an ox, a shur, the word shofar is not found with reference to uh, an ox, a shur, a bull, a cow. What does Rabbi Yossi do with that? Rabbi Yossi on Malachov. Rabbi Yossi will tell you the para nami ikri shofar. There's a remez, there's a hint, it's quite fascinating, to the word shofar in reference to an ox, bull, cow, that's all the same. Where do we find that? Says the Gemara, the chsiv, is talking David Amelech in Tehillim when he's referring to um, Tehillim 69, as you'll see around the side. The sitav lasher, lashem, may be good to God. We're talking about Phyllis of Klal Yisrael. Mishar, greater than the offerings of a shor or a par, whether it's an ox, or an ox. The word is mentioned twice. Says Rabbi Yossi, Im shor loma par. Shor means an ox. Par means a bull. It's pretty, It's the same thing. It's true one may be smaller, larger. Uh, the uh, say when, when it grows and matures, it may be called a par, but it's all coming from the same. It's a shor. So what? Says the Gemara, why does this possible say that our tefillahs should be greater, toy, greater than offering up a shor or a par? Says the Gemara in shor, if the word shor is mentioned in this possible, loma par, why does the possible also mention it should be greater than a par? The in par, loma shor. If we're talking about our tefillahs being equivalent or greater than a pa, why does the apostle also mention the word shor? Yeah? Says the Gemara, Elamai Mishar Par. Yes, the word used is shor, but the word par links to it. You don't need this word par because it's the same species. I show one larger, one more mature. It says the Gemara, my mishar par, me shy for. Woo. Put those two words together and you had the word shy for. It's true, you've got an additional race, but you've got, can you see that? Me shy par. Stick them both together, and it's called smichus, words next to each other, joining up. You have the word shofar there. Yes, it's talking about a shar. It's a shar showing you that we're, even when you talk about a shar, the horns that it's got are like a shofar. A shofar and a shar linked together. Fascinating Gemara. Now, you may tell me and say, yeah, but it's got an additional letter in there. 
If it was show par, I wouldn't mind. But how can you link show par? Now, this is where Peter, if you don't mind, back to out this Gemara, please. And I hope you've got the Pirish. We mentioned him before, the Rishash on this Gemara. Go to Rosh Hashanah 26a. Getting quite nifty at this. And scroll down. Oh, here we are. Here we are. Rabbi Yossi. That's it. If you oh, click on the next, next Rabbi Yossi, further down, further down, 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 down. Click on that. No, not yet. On the side. No, we don't just want him. We want the whole thing. So click again, and we should get Pirushim coming up. Resu go to resources, in the top right. Now go for commentary. Hope Rishash comes up. It does normally come down further. Oh, good. Rishash, yes, sir. Further down. Oh, careful with my voice. 19th century, there we are. Based on class of the author of Shorsha delivered in a synagogue. Ah, there you go. But if you press on Rashash, let's go for the Hebrew first. Drop down. I don't know if it's going to translate this anyway. Rashmul Shtashen. Can we drop down? Can you scroll it? You can't do that. Nowhere else to go. That's the only item. Yeah, I know, but could you scroll so we can see the top of it? All right, it was a good try. I don't know why, why, don't know why that's happened. We can see it. Can you? Yeah. Not now, but we could. A minute ago. Yeah, it's there. Hmm. Where are we going? All right, I'll tell you what the research says. It was a good uh, try. All right, let's, let's get, I'll tell you what Rishash says. Do you remember, now, according to Rabbi Yossi, he's putting these two words together to say the word shor, um, yeah, show for, although you've got the word shor at the extra reish. What he does, those people who've actually got a, a Gemara itself can see this. Chavov um, Omad Aleph. He says, the reish, we often find, he says, the word, the letter reish is often added in texts, in words. Now, this one you will be able to do, hopefully, Peter. Let's go to Shamos, Parshas Tetzada. Can we go to Exodus 28, please? 28, 22. Let's move across. So you've got a very large font here at the moment. Oh, and what is going on? It's not taking up the whole screen in my... I think we see the whole screen. Maybe it's just me. Ah, I don't know why. Did you see the whole screen on the research? Yes. We, everyone could, except you, could see the research. Sorry, let's go back to that, Rashash. Go on. It might just have been me. Let's go back to Rashash quickly, as you did such a wonderful job. Right, let's try it again. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. It's come up on the side of my, my screen. I have got it. Well done. This is a fascinating point. Um, so thank you, Peter. Oh, oh yes, yeah, not translated for us. Okay. Um, Gemara, my shor. So again, what we're learning here, that the word shor is linked to the word next to it as a hint that shor, the horn of a shor is a shofar. Says the Rishash, de reish mutsonuhu harbe. We often find this letter reish sneaking in, shebor like the word sharvet, tachas shevet, a scepter. It's called a Sharvit or a Shevet. A few other examples, Sharvit and Darmesek instead of Damesek. 
Damascus, Darmesic, Damascus, or Baruch Herabi brings a few others. Oh, oh, back again, sorry. Right. The when I've now I want, Vachain Habi Rashi in Pasha's Tzadzada. So this is another one for you, please. 2822 in the name of Ben Saruk, the Horesh of the word Sharasharois is extra. In other words, you find words when it has, can you please, if I can trouble you, go to 2822 in Shamos. 2822 coming up. There we are. Thank you. For your seesaw, Al Hachoshen. This is the breastplate in front of the coin. Shtetab Oizov, two rings. Venosrato es Shete Hatabois. I, uh, I, want, I want which possible. I want the one before. The Osi Salachoshen Sharshos Gablus. Braided chains. Yeah, the chains are coming down from the Osi Salachoshen, a chain which links up to what the comb was wearing on top the aphod. Now, scroll down slightly earlier. If you don't mind, Peter, Which come time? down er, earlier. Psukim, just scroll the other way first of all, and we'll find there's another word used for a chain. Keep coming down. Or seesaw. Ah, there we are. Thank you very much. Two chains. And Rashi on that tells us, if you trick it, Rashi will tell us that actually means Sharshos, the word being the same as Shalshalois. It's another point. The Lamad and the Raj are interchangeable. So we've learned a few things today. So Sharsheres means a chain. Linking the aphode as it comes over the top, like the apron coming down, you've got this sharsharois. Fine. Now go back to that other possible we had before the 28. What was it? 20. There it is. Now press on that and let's see what Rashi says here. Now, very good. This is the same expression as, whoop, as the root sharish of a tree. Sharasheris. So it's got to be kept fixed, firm, like a sharish is to the ground. These roots, as it were, should take hold of the breastplate for firm, so it hangs from the aphoid. Okay? Now, I have a question. Hold on, just one minute. Indeed, Menachem ben Saruk actually explains that the word sharasharis as well in the same roots as he said that the second race was redundant. When you say redundant, it's there as part of the Hebrew word, just as the summer in Shil, the mem in Shilshom, and the mem of Rekom. We do find in Hebrew that there are sometimes extra letters. What they're doing there, I can't tell you, but you do find some extra letters. So what the Rashash in Al Gemara Shashonra is referring to is this shot of Menachem ben Saruk, who explains the word shar, shar sheres, which really means a chain. It means it's rooted, the aphod to the breastplate with his chain. But he said it's linked to the word shar shoros. Well, how come shar shoros has got an extra race? Don't worry about that. We do find extra letters. So in fact, Menachem ben Saruk is saying the word shar sheres or shar sherois, not like Rashi who said it means shar sheres and chain, it's, it's from the word sheresh, which means root. It's rooted to, it's connected to. Beautiful. And also the word, there are a couple of final mems, reikom, reik means empty. Reikom, of course, we have in the, the Amida. Uh, notice Rashi disagrees with him, but it, it's the point he's making that the extra race 
is something which Menachem Ben Shuk says you can have. Um, Rashi is not worried about that point, but just says that Sharsheres comes like Shal Sheles with the ratio and the Lamed interchangeable. Various ways of learning there. But the point that Rashash is making with this reference is to tell me that sometimes you have an extra letter. Brilliant. So going back to Algamar, sorry, Peter, you had a question. I interrupted you. So in the, uh, the tour in the ne Neginot, there's a note called a Shal Shalas. Very good, absolutely. According to Rashi, it's a synonym, meaning a chain. And it's the same as Shal Sheres, Shal Sheles and Shal Sheles interchangeable. <coughs> and you're quite right, that's the Nigun. Of course, we know there are a few of those, not too many. Um, anybody who's laying in them, you've got the, um, a three-pronged attack uh, with, that, with that note. Uh, yes, but the point we're getting across here is this word, when it says Shor Par, you can link those two words together, says the Rishas, because the extra rage is a letter which sometimes can be removed um, for interpretation purposes or understanding words. And here's another one according to Rabben Saruk. So thank you, Peter. Yes, that's, good. that's exactly right. Shal Sheres and Shar Sheres, meaning the same thing according to Rashi. Okay. Back to our Gemara. I'll be okay with that. Um, all we're trying to prove, it's a remez, therefore, that even the word shor is linked to shofar, and that's good enough, says Rabbi Yossi, to use it for uh, shofar, to use it on Rosh Hashanah, so you can use the horn of a cow or an ox. Um, that could be used. Okay, continue the Gemara. What about the Chachomim? Why were the Chachomim so insistent that you cannot use a bull or a cow's horn? Elamai, have you got it? Verabon. The beginning line is Mishar. Says the Gemara Verabonon. What do the Rabonon do? What is that link? Poor, poor, and sure. They don't want to put the two together, in which case the question we raise, why mention that outfitters should be greater toiv, as we said, toinyoisa, than the shur or a par. It's the same species, says the Gemara. Outfitters are that our prayers should be greater than a very special Sure, look at this. Kudra Rav Masna. Da Omar Rav Masna. My Shor Por. What does, what is, if you like, we're talking about the Tilim of David Amelech. What is he referring to when he says our prayers should be greater than the Shor Por? Not linking the two words together. He says, Shuhu Godo, my Shor, the Shor which is a par. We're bringing an offering which was a shur in as much as it was youthful, young. A shur is normally a word used even for uh, at the beginning, a young, um, a bull can be called a shur. Poor is normally an older, uh, a bull. When was a shur? the same as a par. When was the young shur the same as a adult shur? Fascinating Rashi from the Gemara in Abode Zorah. So that's got nothing to do with shofar, says the Chachomim. Why are those two words mentioned in Tehillim? Says Rashi, a shur shehu kapar. Have a look at the Rashi here. B'yoyim on the day that it's called a shar, it was already mature to be called a par. That's very strange, because a par is normally an older, a three-year-old, not a young animal, says the Gemara. 
You know what show we're referring to here? We want our prayers to be equivalent to the very first offering that's brought out. It's true, this is a medrash. You won't find this in the Torah explicitly, but there's a medrash which tells us. It's the show of Masa Bereshis. Wow. There was an offering bought by Odom. Of course, animals created from the beginning of time. Odom himself not, was not created as a baby, uh, you know, nappies. Um, he was an adult. The same with the rest of the creation. All creation was complete. The trees were created in the same way. So we're saying here, Biyom Nivra, Nidra Bekoi Mosai. So, although it may just have been created as a shower of the animals, nevertheless, it was fully formed, fully mature. Now, normally, a shower ben yoimai koru shower. The word shower is the species even from day one. The animals called a shower, even though it may be young. Shenema, remember shower o kesebo eiz ki People are familiar with that. Those, it's called already a shower, an ox from day one, just been born. But a par ena nikra ad ben shonish. Now, the story there in Abu Dazora is. The Medrush, after sunset, Odom Rishon never having witnessed the sun rise, and then witnessing this, this tremendous sunrise, Odom Rishon offered up an animal, he offered up the shur, a shur which was a paw. Because of course, having, although just created, nevertheless all animals created fully formed, so therefore it's called a sharp pass. So we wish out Phyllis should be like the very first Corbonus ever brought. And the remnant to that is to call it a shower, which is a par. You with me? Normally a shower is a younger animal of the full species. And the par is normally a larger animal, in which case you don't need both. Shur could be young or old, but don't have both mentioned in the possum. We're talking here about offering out fillers should be like a shower, which is a par, a reference to the very first Corban offered by Odom, offering up mature animals. So therefore it would be young and old at the same time, if you like, created and offered up. You with me? And that's what we, uh, we wish our prayers should be like. So back to the Mishnah. What are we therefore saying? We're saying, that the Tanakama holds all animals are permitted as a horn besides the ox, bull, cow, which is the same, because you do not find the word shofar, even as a remez, linked to that animal. Rabbi Yossi says, yes, you do. Number one, you, it's called a keren, and we know that's not good enough, but it is also called the shofar in that linking in that posuk in Tehillim, where it says our Twitter should be Mishar Par. Linking up to tell us there's a remez there, hint, Shar Par, which also links together to tell us this word Shofar, take out the Reish, because as I say, as, uh, Rashashi explained to us, and therefore we do have the Shofar in reference to a bull, a cow, and therefore that is also permitted. That is a machloikas. We'll have to see how this develops into the halacha. Continue the Gemara, please. Just another line. <clears throat> Ula Oma. That was the first view. What about back to the Chachomim? Why is it Ul is going to give another reason additional to the Mishnah. There are two reasons, according to Ulla, why you cannot bring a, a horn from a cow. What is a young cow? An agel. Yeah? A calf. Calf moves up to a cow. A calf can't bring 
Now, why can you not bring a cow, the horn of a cow or the horn of a bull? Says Ulla, there's another reason. And this, all being well, will have to develop in coming shiurim, a very important principle. Ulla Oma, Hainu Tamad I'm going to give you an additional reason why you cannot bring the horn of a, of a, a bull, cow. Could the Rav Chista, like the principle of Rav Chista, the Omer Rav Chista, Mipnei Ma Ein Koen Godel Nichnas Bebikte Zohov, Lifnai Belifnim, the Koen Godel, that unique day, the day of Yom Kippur, the only occasion in the whole year that the Kohen Godel, the only person, is allowed to go what's called Lifnai Lifnin into the Kodesh HaKadoshim. He goes, if you remember, with white garments. Remember the Psukim in Acharimos? In white garments. Now, normally, we always talk about the, the Kohen with his Shmona Begodim, the eight special Begodim of the Kohen Godel, and he's got, called gold and wonderful Begodim. Why does he not wear big day Zoho, the golden clothes of the Kohen Godel? Not all gold, but partially gold. Why doesn't he wear that on Yom Kippur? You would have thought Yom Kippur of all days, that would be the day to enter the Nifnai Belifnim, the Kodesh HaKadoshim in gold. And we'll have to see how this links up to our Mishnah in a moment. Why doesn't the Kohen Godel wear gold? Lavoid Avoida to do the Avoida after all, that's going to be the Kapor of Klal Yisrael. So he should wear his special Begodim, the golden clothes that he has. Lefi She'en Kategar Nase Sanegar. You cannot have, it wouldn't be right to come with something which was actually, if you talk about the, the, the prosecutor or the defender, defending and prosecuting, don't come as a katega becoming a sanega. What does it mean a katega and a sanega here? Have a look at Rashi. Ain katega. The accuser can't be used in defense. Look at Rashi, please. Zohov Ah, that reminds us of the golden calf. Zohov for Egel. Gold will be a, in some way, might be a memory of the golden calf. So what? Therefore, the Kohen Godel doesn't wear the gold when he's looking for a kapora on Yom Kippur. Of course, Yom Kippur was the day they were for, actually forgiven for that golden calf, if you remember. After Moshe Rabbeinu had gone up uh, those extra 40 days uh, before, and uh, extra 80 days in full, um, he coming back eventually in Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is not the day to wear gold, where gold was the golden calf. Says Rashi, it's exactly the same reason you don't take any part of the animal of a pa, a bull. Why not? What is a palm? What is a, pa a poro? If they were younger, what would they be? A calf. So the memory of that calf, don't bring on Rosh Hashanah because of this principle, ain kane katego nasa sanega. You cannot have something which was accusing for us. It was Egil Azov. Don't bring that, please, as a memory almost. We're, we're, the idea is there's been a change. We're, the idea of not utilizing something which was used as an Avera, don't use that on Yom Kippur, don't use that on Rosh Hashanah. Says Rashi, the shofar shall pora nami kategar. If you brought the horn of a, of a pa, a bull, a cow, this would act as an obviously cube where we're trying to say that we've moved far away from that to eagle who <laughs> a calf is only a baby a ox or cow and therefore do not bring anything from the cow 
of Rosh Hashanah. That's what we're saying. There's going to be a whole piece of Gemara here asking backwards and forwards and with a beautiful cut to come. But that's what the Gemara says here. Um, so we're saying another reason why the Chachomim do not want the calf, the calf a reminder, the Egel Azov, the, the mature calf, which is a para, a pa, a para, a shor, those animals, we cannot take from those animals the, uh, the horn, the shofar. That's another reason mentioned here in the Gemara. Now, the Gemara now will extend that. We haven't really got all the time to go into that. So I say we will close. But before we close, <clears throat> if we can, Peter, back to your services, please. Let's go to this week's Sedra in Chutzla Oretz, which is, of course, Bollock. And we've got the famous Sukkim. Ah, now we'll go back to Tanakh, back to Numbers. Oh, we can actually go to Bollock, can't we? Bollock. Or, or you go to, what is it? Chapter 24, I think I want. Chapter 24. Yes. Beautiful Sedra which we'd have really lamed here, of course. Uh, and finally, we have those magic words, roll down, possible five. Matovu olecha yake vishnu secha Yisrael. How fair are your tents? How goodly are your tents? Matovu. <coughs> are your tents, Yaakov? Your dwelling place is Yisrael. Many... <laughs> Sidurim, that it is normal of halacha. Uh, on entering the shul, we say those words, There are some people who do not like that minuk because, after all, these are the words of Bilom, who came to curse Klal Israel. His intentions were rather different. Um, why mention Sukim? from Bilam, whose intentions were, however beautiful these psukim are, of course, you'll find Mat over the top of the top of the column. Anybody who gets that alia, uh, Shishi, will find Mat over the top of the beautiful possum, Mat over Lecha Yaakov. Um, but why shouldn't they be said, according to some, because it comes from Bilam. However, beautiful pshat, that I saw from uh, Ramatisio Solomon, people may remember him, he should be well, um, living in, in America. Scroll down the other way, and there's something very special. Do you remember Bilom trying to curse on a couple of times? And this is the final attempt. Look at, oh, let's stop there, please. By Yisra Bilom Eseinov. Actually, hold on a minute. But he all of Ruach Elohim. Bilom lifts up his eyes, looked up, sees them encamped tribe by tribe. Beautiful, each tribe with its own minhogim, its own customs. That's the idea. But he all of Ruach Elohim, and the Spirit of God came upon him. If you could press on that, please, and let's have a look at some of the commentary. If you go to Rashi. Again, commentary, yes. Rashi, yeah, up, yes. Beautiful. Let's have a look at this. This is the, the, the final attempt of Bilom to curse Kal Yisrael. And his intentions, always negative. He wished to cast the evil eye again. Now look at this next one. Sheikhe Nishvatov, dwelling according to his tribes. He saw each tribe dwelling by itself. Not intermingled one with another, each tribe keeping its own particular characteristics. He saw that it, this is beautiful. He saw the entrances of their tents were not exactly the Moran Baba Basra facing each other, so that you couldn't peer into another person's tent. Beautiful. Don't worry about other people, you know, looking into other people's tents, um, peering into other people's tents. That's what it means. It was very special 
Um, now look at the next pasuk. Then he made up his mind not to curse them. He decided to comply with the will of God. If you could press the Aleph, please, Peter. Let's see this in Hebrew. On this occasion, when he sees the way they're encamping, this beauty, each tribe with its own particular characteristics, each tribe not trying to peer into other, what other people, you know, Joneses, don't worry, do your own thing, don't worry about other people's things. Not peering into other people's. Then, Allah Belibai, even he, Bilal, coming to close Kal Yisrael, he is overpowered, believe, beautiful, this Lashon, said Matisyon, Allah Belibai, he's carried away with this. His heart takes him away. The emotions carry him. It's true. That was what he was brought to do. But when he sees this beautiful in the Pasuk, he lifts up his eyes. He sees the way Lishvot of how they are in their own particular camp, own particular homes, not trying to peer into other people's. But then, then the Spirit of God came to him. And if you scroll down a bit again, back to the posse we saw, back to Martovu. Let's look at the Rashi there. Martovu Alecha. Look at that beautiful shot there. Martovu Alecha al Shero'o Pischehem She'enon Mukhuvonim Zemulze. You don't have to peer into other people, what other people, not just what they're up to. But looking into other people, what other people have, don't worry about that. Don't be keep looking over your shoulder. That's what he saw. When he saw that, he was he was carried away. That's this point that Rashi brings. Allah believer. Although he was brought to curse Klali soil, on this occasion, Allah believer, his heart carried oh, carried him away. He was when he saw this. Wow, what a tremendous. Thing, Klal Yisrael, the, these beautiful characteristics of Klal Yisrael. And for that reason, this, of course, is the, the entrance. When we enter a shul, we use this possible Matobo Alecha Yaakov, how goodly are you, how fair are your tents, your dwelling places, uh, coming from Bilal, who saw Klal Yisrael in this beautiful way. Uh, and that's the way we come and enter the shul. And with that, gentlemen, we will. Uh, Back to Peter. Back to you, Peter. Sounds like the old critting, uh, cricketing, wasn't it? Who was it? Back to, yeah, Peter. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you for Michael joining us as well. Good to see everybody. Yeah, um, Baruch Hashem, my voice lasted. <coughs> Just. Um, hopefully, we'll bit back to the ginger, I think, more ginger drinks. Um, uh, meanwhile, I wish everybody well. And uh, you said yeah, back to the gin, back to the gin. <laughs> uh, I like that very nice. That, that's, I, like that. I, I like that. I tell you why.